May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Do spare a thought for the choir, the acolytes, the musicians, the organist, the choristers, the ushers, the greeters, the sides people, the altar guild, the lectors, and just about everyone else who makes Easter and Holy Week such a remarkable event in our yearly calendar. And I see that there are even some people here at 10.30 who were at the 8 o'clock as well. Um, I'm astonished. Uh, it's going to take me about three months to recover. Uh, and, and sleep. I have written four or five sermons for this morning, but I'm not going to preach even a complete one. I'm just going to preach half of one of them with a poem from George Herbert, who more than makes up for omitted sermons. We've had preachers here each evening of the week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We've had Father Nat Katz from All Saints Beverly Hills. On Tuesday, we had Father Vincent Schwann, who is the rector of St. Mark's Van Nuys. And then on Wednesday evening, we had Britt Bjurstrom, from whom you will be hearing just a little later in this liturgy as well. One of the great points that Britt made, and I think this is crucial for us today, is that we keep a different tempo in church. We keep a different chronological time. In fact, we don't keep a chronological time, we keep an eternal understanding of time before us in all places. For we believe that eventually we will be embraced in the arms of the loving Christ who has risen from the dead this day. It, that resurrection, it recreates the entire cosmos. Did you hear faint echoes? I, I hope that I brought some of the intonation out in reading the gospel. The Lord God walking in the cool of the garden. This time not of Eden, but the garden of the tomb where Christ, Christ had lain. And God calling a name. In the Hebrew scriptures, we understand that calls creation into being by saying, let there be light. And out of the void, God's voice is so powerful, his words are so powerful that nothingness has to respond and light comes forth by pure divine fiat. God simply says the word, it is so powerful that nothingness responds by bringing into reality that which God speaks. I personally think that there is good grounds for believing that God does not only speak those words, but in fact sings them as well. That God, God sings creation into being. The song of the resurrection this morning is the one sung by Stevie Smith. I don't know if you've heard of her. She was a British poet 
who died in about 1978. She had an unusual relationship with the church and an even more unusual relationship with God. She didn't quite want to stop believing in him, though she was fairly annoyed that he does exist anyway. She was God's kind of loyal opposition, if you like. She wrote a poem called Airy Christ, as in Christ is in the atmosphere, in the air that we breathe. In that poem, Christ is risen from the dead. And Christ wishes not that people would love him more than anything else because he died, but instead the resurrected Christ, the one we had not thought of, she says, only wishes that people would listen to him sing, would listen to the harmony, the melody, the music of the resurrected Christ. And that's part of what this oasis, in the midst of Hollywood Boulevard, with all of our rush, rush, busy, busy, we're all, oh so caught up in our own little worlds, this is a place where things are done differently, where we join together with complete strangers. That doesn't happen in many places in L.A. We sit next to people whom we may never have met before and may never meet again in our lives, and yet we know that we are brothers and sisters. We are journeying, traveling in the same direction. It is not all gruff noise. <laughs> Apart from a babe's cry, which is entirely different, actually. Um, it's not all, you know, taxi cabs or Uber um, <laughs> blaring the horns or, or cyclists dashing in and out of traffic or buses pulling out into your lane or people cutting you off at the uh, four-way stop. This place, we say, after you. We say, please, we say, thank you. We actually venerate each other. We hold each other sacred, which is what we should do in the outside world as well, but at least we're making a start here. A community of faith is where we recognize each other as being part of God's good creation. We desperately need to hear that in the current political climate. Resurrection is always about what is on the other side. On the other side of death, on the other side of nothingness. It is a life, the resurrection, it is a life we had not properly thought of. And despite our best efforts. Resurrection is on the other side of our imaginations. No matter how accomplished we are, we are still guessing at the contours of what a resurrected life is like, what an Easter people are like. Possibly the closest that we come to it is through music, I believe. I believe that in harmony and melody, in the production of music, the playing of instruments, we come closest to understanding what the divine activity is like, how God 
sings creation into being. Along with musicians, I believe writers and poets also have an unusually keen perception of the reality of things. And so, the Welshman, who was also a priest, George Herbert, one of the great metaphysical poets, will have the last word when the motorbike has gone. <laughs> Many of you will know this from his poem, Easter, and if you don't know it from the poem, you may well have heard it sung in Ralph Vaughan Williams's setting in the five mystical songs. I want to thank so many people for all that they've done, but especially I want to thank, and I'm not going to name any names except Terence Coakley's. Um, the flowers and the arrangements for this year are spectacular. George Herbert, in this poem, thinks about Terence, uh, even though George Herbert lived about 400 years ago. Uh, he thinks about putting up flowers in church and cleaning the uh, floor of the church. He meditates on those themes of preparing for Easter. But he realizes Christ has always got there just ahead of him. Herbert writes, I got me flowers to strew thy way. I got me boughs of many a tree. But thou wast up by break of day and broughtst thy sweets along with thee. The sun arising in the east, though he give light and the east perfume, if they should offer to contest with thy arising, they presume. Can there be any day but this, though many suns do shine, to shine endeavor? We count three hundred, but we miss. There is but one, and this one ever. Christ is risen on Easter day and rises for all eternity in your hearts, in your love, and in the church universal. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>